Hey there, YouTube. Welcome. You've got that funk. Thanks for joining me. I'm kind of concerned about what's going on. And I say kind of concerned. I'm actually petrified to the point of having a difficult time going to sleep sometimes if I contemplate this issue. Uh, the, the military buildup that's going on off the coast of the Korean Peninsula with the flotilla of U.S. warships going over there to basically saber rattle and threaten uh, Kim Jong-un, the leader of North Korea. Um, and try to scare him out of doing any kind of sort of nuclear tests, uh, nuclear devices or missile tests and so on. And it seems to me uh, deliberately provocative. Now, Kim Jong-un is also being deliberately provocative, don't get me wrong. Um, but the guy has the reputation, I've never met him in person, of course, but uh, from everything you read, uh, and this could all be propaganda, but he seems to be a person who is, um, has a sort of megalomaniac kind of streak to him and is a bit of a narcissist and um, quite frankly seems to be a little bit unpredictable as to what he might do if provoked in the wrong way or at the wrong time. So I really think we're playing with fire uh, here. You know, On the one hand, I'm absolutely against nuclear proliferation. I think countries that don't have the bomb shouldn't be allowed to acquire the bomb uh, by whatever reasonable means we can do um, make that happen. It's already way too late for North Korea. They started detonating nuclear uh, devices in tests uh, what, over 10 years ago now, isn't it? When they first started. And, uh, and that being so, uh, the issue has to become one of containment uh, because prevention, it's already too late for that. Now, uh, Kim Jong-un has threatened not just American interests in Asia, but also the United States itself. And there are people who are quite dubious as whether or not he could uh, actually cause any kind of a nuclear detonation over American soil. Um, I, I have no opinion about that, plus or minus. I think the risk is too great to contemplate, and therefore we should be making any and all possible diplomatic overtures to try to take some heat out of the situation, rather than um, you know military escalation, which seems to have only one logical conclusion. Now. One thing that really pisses me the fuck off about this issue is where in the fuck is Congress? Congress is completely ne neglecting its duty of uh, checks and balances against the presidency since Donald Trump became president. And I find it quite remarkable how derelict Congress is. I mean, just the issue of Trump enriching himself with the presidency should be enough to initiate some kind of uh, uh, impeachment proceedings because he's clearly in breach of the emoluments clause of the Constitution. But there's other issues like this one about North Korea, which should cause Congress to try to put the brakes on President Trump before it's fucking too late. At the end of the day, a preemptive strike against North Korea uh, could only be contemplated if we were actually convinced that they were going to strike us first. That's the sense in which our strike could be preemptive. Preventing them from being able to make a strike is only preemptive if they actually intend to make that strike. And it seems to me that by sending a flotilla of warships over there, we are trying to provoke them into doing it. It's almost as if we're willing to sacrifice some Asian city like Seoul or someplace else so that we can then bomb the fuck out of North Korea and possibly risk a, a conflagration which ends up with World War III. I mean, does anybody seriously think that if we send uh, missiles into North Korea, nuclear or not, uh, that China is just going to sit there with their, you know, sit on their hands and watch it happen? Somehow I don't think so. And I also think there's other players in the region, like Russia, who have a vested interest in making sure that bombs and missiles uh, don't go soaring towards their airspace. So the, the tensions are high and ought to be high, and I really think we need some sober reflection on this entire situation. Um, diplomacy might fall on deaf ears at first, but you just keep on, keep on, keep on, and keep on until you make a break, until something cracks. Because what we can't afford is any kind of exchange of nuclear weapons from whatever side towards whatever side. We are so lucky that we've had seven decades go by since the last time nuclear weapons were used on a civilian population. From my point of view as a child of the Cold War, it's kind of a miracle that we haven't used nuclear weapons again in war since World War II. I would love to die with that being true. I would love to be able to look at my grandchildren and know that they're never going to have to suffer from the effects of nuclear fallout or anything like that. And if we 
escalate to the point of no return with North Korea and other actors like possibly China or others uh, get involved or try to prevent us from doing what we think we're supposed to do. Um, it just can't end well. I can't see any way that this can end well other than diplomacy. And unless Congress puts the brakes on Trump, who else is in a position to do so? This is something I think we should be talking about more often and more seriously. I want to hear what your thoughts are about the situation between the United States and North Korea. And, you know, if you think I'm wrong in my thinking, I mean, perhaps you're out there thinking, look, if we don't stop them now, we're never going to be able to stop them. Perhaps that's a point you can make. But how we stop them now is my point. You know, rushing in and dropping bombs all over the place doesn't have a really great track record of success. Show me where it works or has worked. I really can't see that. It seems to me that when we just go around dropping bombs uh, and, and so on, we're not really um, doing any real nation building in that manner. And we just uh, actually store up more problems for future generations than the ones we've already got presently. All right, so that's my thinking on the subject. I look forward to hearing what you've got to say in the comment section down below. And I'll see you again on this channel very soon. May all your ups and downs be ups.